I'm Georgina. I'm currently studying my foundation degree in zoological management and I'll be going on to do my BSc in zoological management and conservation next year. Uh, and I've volunteered over the past few years in various zoos. I'm Jack. I'm a final year veterinary student at the University of Liverpool and I'd like to go into uh, initially small animal medicine but then more exotic animal medicine uh, including zoo animals and birds of prey. I used to love visiting zoos as a child. Constantly, as a kid, I was at zoos. It's incredible really in that it's always played an integral role to my life. Whenever we went there, I just used to be in love with everything that was there. Going to the zoo as a child has definitely influenced my uh, chosen career, which is uh, veterinary medicine. Naturally, as with any industry, you will get good and bad zoos, and, and that's the way it is. Um, but good zoos, absolutely I agree with, because I think they play such a crucial role in the community in terms of education, research, conservation, exposing people to exotic animals. So a good zoo will always have an animal's best interests at heart. The main sort of care parameters that have to be legally given for the animals include what's called the five freedoms and so these basically are five things which you, if you're keeping an animal in captivity whether it's for uh, you know farming situation a pet situation or a zoo situation that these things should be provided for an animal these are freedom from hunger and thirst freedom to exhibit natural behaviors freedom from fear and anxiety freedom from discomfort and also freedom from pain or injury A zookeeper's job is not 9 to 5, it, it's constant and these keepers just, they don't stop, they really don't bless them, they work so hard. So these animals are probably the most pampered animals you, you'll ever meet in your life, certainly more than some people's pets I would say. In terms of diet, they're very well looked after. So a good zoo will always provide them with food that's appropriate for their uh, development and close to what they get in the wild. Through experience, it is crazy how strict it is on what you can feed them. If you have a banana that's even slightly bruised, mm -mm, not going in. That goes in the bin because it, it could carry something that could infect them and make them ill. We have dedicated veterinarians that develop particular diet sheets, so diet plans for the animals based on nutrition, so they're getting what they would be getting in the wild. So really the three main things that you should be doing are education, research and conservation work. Conservation is very important in zoos um, and it's, it's one of the, probably the key element of having zoos in a modern day world. We're trying to conserve species and there's many different ways that zoos do that. The main is conservation breeding programs, which people know a lot about. Obviously, zoos produce a lot of offspring from critically endangered species. And through that, they have already been able to do so many reintroduction projects. If you look at species like the California condor, Prozolski's wild horse, golden lion tamarins, scimitar hondorex, these animals were all pretty much extinct in the wild. They weren't going to come back if it wasn't for zoos. So by conservation breeding, we then had enough to send back out into the wild and the majority of these animals are now thriving and their numbers are gradually increasing. So conservation breeding is great and it's very carefully managed through the stud book keeper. A lot of vets will manage these sort of stud books, so these are the breeding programs of these animals. And they will decide who breeds with who, they try to work out the population genetics to work out which, which are the best animals to breed together to produce the best offspring for eventual release. As far as research goes, I feel that research is like extremely important in um, conservation because the more we know about these animals, the more we can help them. Uh, research into the breeding cycles of these animals, research into what best constitutes their diet. I know there's been a uh, study on the mountain chicken frog, which was done in zoos on captive populations and then transferred to the wild 
disallowing people to research on these frogs which um, and sort of assess their body condition, assess what weight they should be at their breeding season to assess how well they're doing in the wild, how well they're feeding, whether their ecosystem's being disrupted without actually disturbing the frogs themselves because otherwise it'd be a very sort of invasive process. And actually, uh, with this particular species, what they were looking at, the, like, the body fat level of these frogs, the only way for them to have got that accurately would be to uh, kill the frogs and then uh, measure the body fat um, after the frogs died, which for a very endangered species is completely inappropriate. Research in zoos is really important because what it's doing is then informing us on behaviours that we might see in the wild or the effects of wild elements on the actual animals. So if you've got particularly reclusive species, species that you don't see very often out in the wild that are very flighty and very scared of people, you can very easily then come and do those tests in a zoo and get some, some basic results. So I know SeaWorld did a very good research project recently where they were providing aerial images of their killer whales because wild researchers wanted to compare sort of average sizes of orcas from above using drones. And so by using captive whales they were able to get pretty much average sizes, what a good healthy whale would look like, and they can now compare those images with images of wild whales and say, okay, this animal's pregnant, this animal is very, very thin, this animal is of average size, this one might be overweight. And that is then giving them an indication of food levels in the area. It could bring up questions of, okay, why are they so skinny? Is it something to do with food or is it something to do with contaminants? Is it something to do with boats? So zoos definitely play a role in research and they're usually sort of the first starting point for people who are then going to go out into the field uh, and see these animals for the first time, research animals for the first time. Sort of other areas in which um, vets can be involved with the education. Vets can uh, often talk to people about like what they're doing in zoos and sort of help people understand like what it actually requires to keep these animals both um, in the zoo, but also how that would also affect how they are kept in the wild. I think this is one of the key areas in which zoos can sort of help with conservation because. Obviously, it's all very abstract to a member of the public. There's a lot to be said for seeing these animals face to face and then like understanding what they are and how they live. It's important, it's important that people get a chance to see these, these creatures because a, a kid in the centre of Bristol may never get the chance to go out and see a dolphin in the wild or a lion in the savannah, but they can go up to Bristol Zoo and see a lion right there, right in front of them. Obviously a zoo isn't the perfect environment for this animal, uh, obviously the perfect environment is the wild, but I think with certain species it's definitely true that a lot of the members of the public won't have considered them as important, but the zoo can be a platform for educating these members of the public in why this animal's there, why it needs to be there, and why it's important that it stays there. Whether it's through signage up on an exhibit that tells people where the animal's from, to actual educational displays, so bringing ambassador animals out for people to watch doing natural behaviours, to handling sessions, bringing out maybe creatures that people are a bit scared of, like snakes or tarantulas, and letting them actually hold one, touch one, or at least just see one up close can completely change their mind on, okay, maybe this animal isn't as scary as I thought. And that's really, really cool because they then begin to understand a bit more about that animal and then ask further questions like, okay, so what, what's wrong with this animal in the wild? Why aren't they thriving? And even things like just seeing what an animal eats, how an animal eats, how does an animal move, particularly for young children, it starts to really get those questions ingrained in the head, and that's really, really good. A lot of what we do is affecting animals in the wild, and it's all 
very easily remedied just by adjusting our lifestyles, even just the tiniest bit at a time. Hopefully people will gradually start to change their ways, whether that be by going on a safari, buying tickets to accredited zoos, absolutely, because then your money is going towards not only helping the animals in the zoo, but there are a portion of it's also going back out into the field and helping its animals out in the wild. So that's why zoos matter, they're very important.